and we are back with our next episode. This is episode 15 and today we are talking about hunting in Alaska, one of the most beautiful places where you really can go for hunting and something which is on the bucket list of many, many hunters all around the world. What you can hunt in Alaska, I mean, the most famous one for sure is the Alaskan Yukon elk, uh, a moose, which are the biggest moose which you can really find in the world together with Kamchatka. So it's a really good area to come back with a really, really moose tro uh, big moose trophy. So this is really something uh, Alaska is very, very famous for. But besides the moose, you can also hunt a lot of other species in Alaska, beginning with the bears. So we have the black bears, which you can find in many places in Alaska, but you also can hunt here for the grizzly bear. And it's one of the only countries where you really can not only hunt, but also export the, the grizzly to many places in, in the world, especially to, to Europe. Yeah, but there are also other species that you can hunt in Alaska, starting with the caribou. So the caribou you can either do in combination with moose and or uh, the dull sheep, or you can hunt it on its own. And then of course the famous dull sheep, which you can also get here in Alaska in a very good population. Last but not least, of course, you can also hunt the wolf in Alaska, but uh, hunting wolves is uh, more or less a lottery. So it's um, very challenging to really see them. And if you see them, it's challenging to hit them. So uh, wolf is really just by luck. For the accommodation in Alaska, we have several options. So the main lodge, what we have here, so-called Stonewood Lodge, is uh, located on a nice uh, small lake. And from here we start some of the hunts and we also start uh, the fishing trips. But in general, this is only for a specific amount of time where we can use the Stonewood Lodge for hunting. And here you see also how it looks inside. So it's quite very nice lodge, which you can then also use, for example, if you come with a spouse or so, which could stay in the lodge when you are out hunting. The majority of the hunts is also more in spike camps and it could be even like you see here just with a tent so you fly in camps where you fly also put the, the tents uh, and yourself and so on into the, the, um, the camps and from there you're really then going out on, on the huntings. These spike camps are especially used when you hunt for, for the dull sheep and this also in, um, makes sure that you have or requires that you really have a good physical condition because it requires a lot of walking and some of the hunts are even just backpack hunts. So it's really just walking, walking, walking to really find your animals so that you can get your, to your dull sheep. So how you come to Alaska? First of all, normally you always fly into Fairbanks, you stay a day in the hotel or a night in the hotel and the next morning you're flying out with a normal plane or a water plane from Fairbanks to the different areas and spike camps, which we are then using. And as you can see here, there's a typical plane for, for Alaska, which you can then use to really bring yourself and all the stuff really to the either main lodge or already to the spike camp. From the spike camp, you have then several options. Some of the camps you can really use horses, so you can hunt by horse, or in some other areas you have here these ATVs, so like four wheel, eight wheel drives and so on, which just helps you in the lower areas to really move forward quite quick without having to walk all the time. If it then goes more up in the mountain, like on the dull sheep hunt, then most of the time it's more like really backpack hunting where you have to walk because there you can't use these four wheel drives or sometimes even not horses. So now some impressions from the area. So this is now an area which is more like for moose and caribou, quite open, uh, nice Indian summer. You see a lot of color here and uh, you see the bushes and then a few trees. And it's more up, you go to the mountain where you still also see the snow. This is then where you have very few vegetation. So that's, uh, this is something which is really then here in the mountain more for the dull sheep and in the open areas, it is really for moose, caribou, and potentially grizzly bear. Yeah, this is now an area where it's really more for the mountain, like for the, uh, for the dull sheep. What you normally do for the dull sheep, it's often spike camp. Sometimes it's even a flying camp where you're on top of the mountains. If you are more in the, in the lower areas, then what you normally do for the dull sheep 
you really climb up the mountain to be on top to really have a long view and you can can <clears throat> see all the other areas to really find the dull sheep to see if there's a proper ram in there if yes then you make a plan how you can get there so that you can can shoot the ram so this is now how it sees uh, how it looks like when you're in a spike camp i mean as there is no kitchen nothing what you normally have you collect your your woods and then you have a yeah, stove like this where you can then really um, make your like here ham and eggs in the morning with toast you can also make your coffee or you have then also chili con carne and all these products which you brought with you to really and make it over the next days the best time is always when you didn't really have shot your caribou moose or or um, or dal sheep because then you have fresh meat and not always the the meat which you brought in at um, the chili con carne and all these ready cooked stuff which you brought in with you. Good. This is also something which can happen in Alaska. I mean, if you're not careful with your food which you have in your backpack, then you could be in the situation that suddenly a grizzly is with you. And I mean, then it's uh, quite dangerous what these guys are doing. But normally, what you do then is if you have a tag, I mean, then you might be able to shoot the, the grizzly. But if you have no tag, then it's just waiting for the grizzly to eat whatever food is in your backpack. Hope that he doesn't destroy him completely. Uh, and then when he's gone, then you can, can grab your stuff. What we normally do is in the camps, we have small <coughs> uh, bells, which then uh, rings all the time that, that the grizzlies are not really approaching us. And uh, that really some kind of protection against uh, the grizzlies. So this is another um, impression from the area. And as you can see here, we've seen the high mountains where you have no vegetation. Then you have seen this uh, Indian summer area in the flats where you have some trees, but most of it is more like grass and, and uh, small bushes. This is now more in, in the lower areas where you really have rivers and, and a lot of normal forests and trees. And this is an area where, for example, can find your, your caribous and also uh, moose. Yeah, and then if you're successful and you really have worked your ass off like here for the dull sheep, then you really can come home with a very, very nice trophy. But as you can see in the background already, I mean, these hills are quite high and a lot of challenge to really climb them up and down. So that's why hunting for dull sheep really requires that you're really uh, physically fit, that you really can, can do it. On the other side, here you see uh, a moose from Alaska. This is a little bit easier hunt than for the dull sheep because as you can see here, it's more flatter area. So you can on the one side walk much easier and on the other side, you can also use like the horses and the four wheel drives so that you can really move much faster through the areas and then find the, the moose. And then last but not least, also the grizzly area, which is also not too much mountain. Um, but it could be also a little bit hilly. So this is something where you could also use sometimes the four-wheel drives, um, but also uh, walking quite a lot. And then if you're lucky, you can get a, a grizzly like uh, this, um, this hunter here had. Yeah, with this, um, last but not least, what you can also see in Alaska if you're super lucky is the Aurea Borealis, which is really these northern lights, what you can see here on the, on the sky. I mean, if you're lucky and you have really a sky full of stars and then you have these northern light I mean then you can see them on on miles away and it's really really nice experience if you have these during the night yeah with this that's it about Alaska so for me Alaska is really one of the dream destination for most of us hunters I know it's I mean compared to other destination not really that cheap but it's really a very very nice landscape and super nice hunting so it's a very nice destination really to, to go for a trip and many, many hunters have it really on their bucket list.